Suppose you're deciding how and when you're going to intervene in the market. The sort of simplest rule of thumb might be, uh, let's get as close as possible to free market. So whenever possible, if we have an opportunity to eliminate one of those uh, problems with the first and second welfare theorem, we'll do it. All right. So if we have a tax and it's perfect competition or whatever, if we have a tax, basically get rid of it. If we have an externality, get rid of it. If we have market power, get rid of it. Okay. It turns out it's not that simple either. If you could get rid of everything, then, you know, the first and second welfare theorems would hold perfectly and you'd be great. What if you can't get rid of everything though? What if you can only get rid of some of the problems? Is that still better? Unfortunately, not necessarily. So this is called the theory of the second best. Theory of the second best. It's sort of a econ version of like Christianity's model of the fall, like that we live in a fallen world and utopia is not possible. Okay, so the theory of the second best is basically the idea that uh, if you can't fix everything, fixing some things but not other, you know, fixing just some of them may not make things better in fact. All right, so let's look at an example of this. Suppose we've got a uh, firm, we've got a good here, that's demand, and we've got some kind of constant marginal cost. Okay, and let's assume that this product is beset by a externality, okay? So the private cost is here, but the social cost is higher. Okay, and we'll have it be constant also. On top of that, so we've got one, a negative externality. This is an, an example, by the way, that we're doing here. Let's add on top of this market power and make this firm a monopolist, okay? So if we make this firm a monopolist, we're gonna calculate the optimal allocation of resources. I'm not the optimal. We're gonna calculate what the monopolist chooses to do by setting its marginal revenue equal to its marginal cost. Because this is a firm, it doesn't care at all about, uh, you know, this externality. It's only looking at its private costs. And where those cross marginal revenue, that determines the quantity that it's going to produce right here. And here's our monopoly price. Okay. All right. This is the situation we're in. If we had the power to eliminate this firm's, like break up this monopoly, so I want to just say here, we've got two problems, this negative externality and a monopoly. Suppose we're considering, we have the power to break up the monopoly. That's within the government's power. This is not a natural monopoly or anything. This would be normally the kind of monopoly that would be really good to break up. Unfortunately, we don't have the power to end that externality. Like that's something inherent in the production process. So we can we can fix one of the problems, but not both. Would we want to fix the one that we can? Well, look what happens if we do. Right now, because we're we're uh, producing here, the deadweight loss is the uh, difference between the demand, the willingness to pay of people, and the cost of producing the good. But if we're going to compare, like the social, we should be comparing it to the true cost of the good. And that means our deadweight loss is here. It's this little triangle. If we could break up the monopoly, then people would be, uh, we would produce at the private, at the price where price equals marginal cost. So this is going to be, this is going to result in sort of perfect competition. Let's assume we could assume it's sort of Bertrand competition that happens if we can break up the monopoly. So if we if that happens, the quantity goes out to here, and the deadweight loss is now this much larger region. Okay. This is supposed to be dead, or D. So by fixing one problem but not both, we made things worse. Okay. And this is basically the idea behind the theory of the second best. If you can't solve all problems, Solving 
some of them can make things worse. To sum it up, let me scoop this up. The theory of the second best says that if market distortions or market failures, which is, you know, market power externalities, these other reasons that the first and second welfare theorem wouldn't hold, if market failures are present, and cannot be 100% fixed. This is the, you know, fixing less than 100% may make things worse. You know, they say two wrongs don't right make a right in economics they can. Different market failures can offset each other, kind of cancel each other out. And so if you get rid of one without getting rid of the other, you can end up worse than where you started. All right. So this is the problem we're dealing with. And this is the world that policymakers have to live in. They have to decide how and when to intervene, knowing that they can't just use the simple rule of thumb of always move closer to the ideal. All right. So let's talk about how you can think about improving things.